But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. Um, all right, let's go. Let, matter of fact, let's do the. Uh, let's talk about TD Jakes. You were saying that he um, made some disparaging comments about women, so they kind of branded him as the new Kevin Samuel. Well, almost. I'm not gonna say that they're branding him. Um, I will now. I will shout out Urban X on this one because it does make sense. They're they're saying like the void of Kevin Samuels has been gone. So like it's just like now people un people see that that since he's gone is left a vacuum. So they see that this market is um you know something that um that something that he, you know a uh, market that's something that people want to tap into. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I get yeah. So I get gotcha. I get it. I'm gonna see if I can pull. If I could pull yeah, it up. Yeah, see if we can find the article about it. Because, um, you know, I really don't know much about what's going on. I mean, he's somebody every now and then he, he is kind of put back in the headlines for something he said or did or, you know. And, I mean, these, the mega church preachers are always getting in trouble. Um, uh, one of the channels I watch on YouTube was just talking about uh, Kim Burrell because she made some comments um, to her church people. Because it said that I guess they were feeling like she was being a little too lavish or something like that, and she kind of made <laughs> and uh, she made some comments talking about some uh, all y'all talking about me and y'all wearing all these swaddling clothes and all that, and people was like, whoa, you know what I mean? Like you know, it was, she was taking a jab at people with low a low amount of money, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so she made some comments that just kind of made. A lot of churchgoers feel kind of a certain kind of way. Now, who does again? Kim Burrell. Oh, she's a pretty big name in the Christian gospel community. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. but, so, um, but yeah, I mean, and she, she's she's one of those. She's uh, I guess what you call an elitist in that in that group. She hang out with people like T.D. Jakes and all of them. You know oh. what I mean? Yeah. Hey, every every so, time I dressed up, man, when I went to, when I went to church, because you know I'm I'm. A, I'm a heathen. Yeah, hey, heathen now. I'm a fucking heathen. But uh, yeah, every time I went, especially this white church, they're like, "Oh, you look like T.D. Jason. Y'all motherfuckers better not say that shit again. Right. I ain't that ugly. Exactly. I mean, I know I'm ugly, but I ain't that ugly. You know, you know that's how they up. look. They all of us look. Oh, the same. all y'all niggas just look alike. You look like T.D. Jason. Yeah. You're like hell no. Exactly. Hell no. But anyway, going back, going to this article. So this is on June twentieth. So this has been a while. Uh, he had a sermon for. Uh, oh, this is about a month. Yeah, ago. Okay. yeah. So it was a sermon talking about real men pour in on Father's Day. Uh, he expressed his views. I'm just paraphrasing. This is from uh, SK Pop uh, Sports Keed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's how you said Keita uh, Sports Keita. Uh, anyway, so basically, um, he talks about the video expressed the you know the place in women's society. Um, he's saying that. Uh, in the clip that men having to be led by women or be supported by them, the divine order is broken. But this is my thing. Um, yeah, I won't get I won't get into too much of that. But basically, this is this is my thing about it. You sir, matter of fact, let me look at the camera. You sir, U T D Jakes, you are the main reason why things are are the way they are now with women you are the reason for that sir let, let 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 me let me go back to the 90s remember in the 90s you held conferences for men had a men's conference and you know you had a little you know you had a little singing had a little dancing you have you know niggas getting ready to get out the billfold you know what i'm saying they gave a little bit of stuff and then uh you know niggas gave I then when they when when you came back like oh don't you love the song and everything we gonna make don't you wanna give, give don't you man. wanna give a love off niggas like look now we done gave one time I done I done gave I done, I done bought your book I done bought you know mm -hmm. I bought you know I bought a tape from family this that and the third da 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 we done did this all right I'm spent I got I got rent to pay I got mm -hmm. gas to get back I gotta eat for the right. week. I done did. I done did what I did. But don't you want to go and give? And mm -hmm. so what he did, he realized well, that wasn't working. Why it wasn't working? So what he did was he switched the audience 
and made it a woman's conference, and made a woman's conference, and tap into their emotions and know what you want to give, and, and see, now, women are like, oh, let me get a check, you can check, oh, it's so beautiful, so now they mess with their emotion, and I'm not saying that the women, I mean, there are women that are logical and rational, I understand that, I don't want to, I don't want to say, I don't want to say that to be like, oh, well, women can be in my, because I can already hear that, but for the most part, you know, these women, especially those who are easy prey. And now the way things are structured, you know, that's what I'm saying. They were, they were making money. They were really making money off the independent black woman. If you really think about it, I'm not going to, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm TD Jakes and I know this money's coming in on the influx like that, I'm not going to fix that shit. I wouldn't. I wasn't like, well, what you need to do is get you a strong man and come over here and do this and make sure that everything is right and holy matrimony. And then when you do find a man, I said, when you find a man that you need, I said, you can, you know, you can antelope and do things and make sure that you have a strong family. No, I'm not going to do that. No. You need to do what you need to do. Woman, I know that man and made you mad. I know that woman, I know that man has done things in your life and did this. But what I need you to do now is you just reach in your checkbook and bless the man of God. And when you bless the man of God, God will pull you out of blessing. I said, pull you out of blessing that you cannot receive. I don't know where the fuck I came up with all this shit. Because I didn't, because I was <laughs> That is oh, a horrible T.D. Jakes impression. Yeah, it's a horrible T.D. Jakes impression. It's like... Uh, 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 <laughs> he going on a whole uh, sermon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, that's what I'm saying, though, man. Like, but, like, I wouldn't... Th like, if I know... If me being on top, knowing that, hey, if I fix this problem that is plaguing our community, if I fix this, 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 this I'm not going to be able to eat. So I got to keep this shit broken. Right. Right, I gotta keep this shit broken because this gonna feed me. Right, but now, like I said, people like Kevin Samuel love him or hate him, and I'm I'll be the first to tell you I didn't totally agree with him dogging on the women like that. I didn't agree with that. I didn't agree. You know, now there's some things that he said. I feel. That were true. There's some things I'm like, okay, yeah, I can understand that. I see that. Do I feel that Kevin Samuels was an enemy to black women, you know, the black community, particularly black women? I I don't, yes and no. I, I mean, as far as like, you know, the greatness on that, on that platform, yeah, that's kind of detrimental. But as far as like the community as a whole, I don't think he was, he's the main problem. You understand what I'm saying? So with that vacuum being gone, and I feel, I feel like people saw that this man was making a profit off of degrading women. If, 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 and I'm putting that in quotations in, in, in that, in that, in that, uh, space and getting the profit off of making that. So I'm thinking they're saying like, well, hey, wait a minute. Well, if he did that and he made money and people are tuning in, I might need to do that to make money because this, you know, and and that way I can get the men to come back. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I mean, that, that's that's the that's that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. And I think, but yeah, like I said, though, I, he. He's talking about, oh, women done came up and, oh, they done did this and they don't need you, nigga. They don't need you, I tell you. They don't need you. But now nah, you the main cause. You were the main cause, sir. Yeah. You were the main and cause. And I mean, you know, I don't think sometimes these people think about what they say when they say it. You know what I mean? But, you know, it is what it is, man. But, uh, you know, you, you do have to be careful about what you say nowadays, man. But, you know, I'm sure he's getting a lot of backlash from the church and all of that. So, you know, T.D. Jakes, man, I hope you uh, can rectify that before they tear your whole service down. Yeah. So. All right. So I um, guess we're going to go ahead and move on. Uh, Let's get back to some hip hop. So yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. So, no more sermon. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the show 
Origins of Hip Hop. All right. The latest episode is Uncle Luke, uh, the originator of Southern rap music out of Miami. And, uh, you know, it's, it goes real deep into his backstory and, you know, how he came up. And, uh, you know, he's well known for very explicit lyrics, sexual content, booty shaking, and all of that good stuff. So it talks a lot about that. But he said in the beginning when he was getting started, he was bringing in acts like Roxanne Shante. You know, he was supporting people like that. You know, the Juice Crew, all those types, bringing them down to kind of help. Because he was kind of, you know, running the local scene, but he wanted to kind of bring in those bigger names. And that would help blow him up, you know. And so it's a good uh, episode. You know, I didn't really, uh, I got about... 75% through it. I didn't get all the way to the end, but yeah, I think it's pretty good. You know, I think De La Soul actually had like a song in his style. Oh, yeah, talking okay. about the Miami sound. Um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But it's kind of it's kind of funny, you know, with that. You know, they they would honor Lou, but then allegedly just Tupac, you know what I'm saying? I'm not right. allegedly, I'm just putting that there yeah. for him for him doing the. You know, for T- Tupac having the women in the video and yeah, all, like yeah. the I get around joint, mm-hmm. but um, but uh, continue. I'm just... But no, I was just saying in general, it's a good episode. You know, I ain't gonna go too deep into it, but of course, they had commentary by you know Miami rapper Trina, also uh, Trick Daddy. You know, so they're well known Miami rappers. So of course, they're gonna weigh in on Uncle Luke's influence on them. You know, and he talked a lot about the Two Live Crew, how he met them. What it started out, two live crew started out as uh, like these three dudes, but then two of them actually dropped out, and that's when Luke and uh, one of the other dudes, I think it was Fresh Kid Ice, that's the Asian, right? Yeah, yeah I think passed, just passed them away. two came out yeah. later. So Rest two live crew started as three other guys actually before mm-hmm. that, and they didn't want to. Two of the guys didn't want to really do that type of explicit content and booty shaking music, so they was like, nah, this ain't for us. So that's when, you know, they kind of formed the current version of the Two Live crew. So it was a good story. I think, uh, you know, anybody who has access, uh, go look for it. Um, it's called Origins of Hip Hop. Like I said, it's on the A&E Network. Uh, if you can find it on on demand or, you know, wherever, uh, especially that Grandmaster Flash episode, man, that was really good. So going back to like Uncle Luke, now you said now one thing I will say. Now you saying that this man, you from Florida, mm-hmm. right? From Miami. Yep. Now that's in the South, right? Yep. Okay, like he reached his hands out to bring somebody from Queens. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Okay, so my question is, what's what's this whole shit about North versus South? And exactly. Not that don't make thing. sense. That don't make sense. Don't make a damn Because see, sense. that that's why I would say like, you know, the the hip hop back in our day made more sense because we were really fighting to be a genre. It wasn't none of this. I mean, you might have a little, uh, you know, rest in peace, Tim Dog. I think he probably was like, I mean, it was, it started, but I think, I mean, but I really think like it wasn't as big as it was until maybe the, you know, 90s and stuff. But for the most part, everybody was trying to, help each other because they understand, look, we don't care where it's at. We're just trying to promote this. We're trying to promote this and grow this into it because this is a, this is a, this, we want to make this a genre. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Yeah, and speaking man. of Tim Dog, y'all go check out my man's uh, lyrical breakdown from this week. You know, he did my man Tim Dog. I'm a mad man. dog. So what's up? I'm a mad dog. So what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it, and also once I finally got the video, it did take me a while because I couldn't find the lyrics nowhere. Where did Man, you find the lyrics? I had to listen to it and type it. Oh, type okay, it that's down. what I wanted. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, why are the lyrics damn, nowhere? I should have. Man, you should have told me. I, no, I I'm, I'm just so used to going on the internet and they come right up. You know what I mean? It was a couple of websites. Yeah, that that's was what like, I'm saying, man. Yeah. Some, when it comes to certain, like, people are like, oh, Spotify got up. I'm like, no, the fuck it don't. Right. No, there's some shit. There's some gems out there that like Spotify don't have. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. you gotta ha- like you gotta dig. Yeah, because Ula didn't have them. There's a lot of other lyric yeah, websites that I go to. They didn't have it. Uh, 
there's a one website I go to, AZ Lyrics. Uh, mm-hmm. There's one called Genius Lyrics, and none of them had them. I was like, yo, what the hell? But yeah, it's um, but that's the thing, man. It's just like with, with that album, not to take not to take over Luke, but with Tim Dog, um, he only like I said in the in the video, he only really had like allegedly like two albums. Yeah. But and but you could clearly hear that the and the night because. That Do or Die came out in 93. Penicillin on Wax came out in 91. You can clearly tell that that Tim Dog in 93 was better than that Tim Dog in 91. Yeah. You can clearly tell it. Yeah. So I would love to see, you know, what a Tim Dog in 95 would sound like. Right, right. I would love to see that. But, you know, that would have been nice, man. Yeah, but um, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace to Tim Dog, man. I mean, he did have a lot of controversy. You know, coming out, you know, with the disc records, we ain't gonna go into that, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But you know, he was definitely known for uh, just trying to, just trying to, uh, you know, support that New York sound. So, but anyway, um, but yeah, so you know, I just wanted to say, check out that um, show, uh, Origins of Hip Hop. Yeah, yeah, definitely. and uh, the episode about Luke was really good. You know what I mean? And if you can just have a brother out. You know, with a bootleg copy, or I mean, you know, I mean, no, <laughs> excuse me, right. I mean, if you. <laughs> You got it at your house, you know, bro, man, kind of, you know, see it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because, you know, these bills and shit be high. Right. Pass it on. You yeah, know just pass it on. <laughs> you know, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into another topic here. All right. So, uh, the president got cold. He got cold. I'm going to say cold. Yeah. <laughs> he got cold. <laughs> and guess what? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I mean, I really don't. Yeah, I don't. I, man, everybody's making it all. I mean, it was like, all the only reason I'm talking about it because it's all it was all over the news. The news was, yeah. It was on. It was on motherfucking Fox. It was on C. Now you know it was some shit when Fox and CNN got the same news talking about. Oh, and they and like Fox, you supposed to hate this nigga, right? You actually supposed to hate this nigga. Well, he's he's got the germ. Oh, he's got the germ. Everybody <laughs> reported. The germ. He's got the germ. It's like, oh golly, he's got. And it, and uh, it's like it's like prompt. It's like this whole circumstance and dance. And my thing of it is uh, on it is this. It's like everybody's done went past this. I mean, it's still going around. I'm not saying that COVID ain't. Oh shit! I said the word. I the road is not is not um available. You know, not around. A oh, man down, it's man shit. We are gonna be all right. We are gonna be all right. Fuck yeah. it. But anyway, we'll it ain't see. like that. But see, that's what I'm saying. Everything is gone from it now. Every right. everything is like, you know, when I had, like I said, I go to uh, family fitness. Uh, not family fitness. Uh, Planet Fitness. Excuse me. I mean, I go and work out. Well, you know, before you know when the pandemic was up and rising, you know, they asked you, sir. You know, when you get on the phone. You ask you, you know, some several questions and then, you know, all right, you know, you, if, you know, don't come in. If you got these symptoms, you got this, don't come in. All right, back. Now, accept, blam. And now, you know, you got your little Scantron. You go up to the little machine and you scan your ID in. Now, it's just like, well, just gonna come on in. Scan. They don't ask, they don't even prompt that question no more. Right. But you got it. Mm-hmm. And my thing of it is, I think they're trying to rev it up again because they know, the, you know, back in the day, back in the day, people would have took this shit. Yeah. The the jab. Yeah. A lot of, it was met with a lot of, I mean, people took it, but it was met with a lot of resistance. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and what's sad too, man, like, people punking people like, well, you're going to lose your job. If you, like, I thought we was in America. You know what I'm saying? Why yeah. the fuck are you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You I know. I mean, some jobs won't even hire you if you ain't got that joint. Yeah, that's what Which is sad, but, you know. And that's another thing. That's why a lot of people go on remote. Mm-hmm. That's another reason why a lot of people are, you know, talking about, well, we can't get no one but... Well, no, nah, if you got a fucking mandate and some shit and talking about, oh, you got to get this for you work over here with me. And they're like, nah, fuck you. We ain't rocking with it. Mm-hmm. Like, what... What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? But all I'm going to say is, he got the jab and multiple boosters. It's facts. So how he get it? Bang. Multiple boosters. Now, the jab was supposed to shut that shit down. 
The first booster was supposed to shut that shit down. Yep. The second booster was supposed to shut it down. And, and, and people still getting it. So, Dang, I don't know man. what to tell you, man. So, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at that. Dang, Biden. Too bad you ain't black. <laughs> Why you say that? You know what he said. If you don't vote for me, I ain't black. No, you know what I'm Too bad you, you ain't black. <laughs> Bad you ain't black, bro. right? <laughs> Bad you ain't black, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> Man, listen. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> so yeah, on to the next. So um, before we uh, shut it down, you know, we got one more topic we didn't get to talk about last week. Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. some uh, remarks that my man T Pain made about Tupac. Um, basically, T Pain was. Uh, Basically, he was saying that, you know, he felt like if um, if Pac was, I, I want to say he said it was, if it ended up being more of a lyrical battle, that Pac would have got dusted, basically. And a lot of... <laughs> a lot of people got mad at that. Now, um, how did you feel about it? I, there's, I will say this. The, him pop getting dusted lyrically, fuck no, fuck no. Now as far as like him making the hit it up, and he might got taken out sooner with this with this climate. And I'm just particularly thinking about the drill rappers. That that might be a possibility as far as like what he was saying. Mm -hmm. I will say that, but as far as like lyrically, no, nobody ain't got. Come on, man. Who, 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 who in this and in, in today's rap got a song like their mom? But see, I think that he was talking about like if if him and Biggie just went at it lyrically, you know what I mean? That that's what I think he more so meant. Now, if you go catalog for catalog, like who got maybe bigger hits or something like that? Yeah, it would not be any kind of slaughter at all. But I think lyrically, in my opinion, I'm going to play devil's advocate. I do think Biggie would have taken him out. But no, nah, but no, nah, he he wasn't talking about Biggie. He was talking about today's climate, the social media climate. Um, I, might have to go no. back, I might have to go back and look at it. Because yeah, in today's no. climate, no. He was Fuck not. no. But I, I, when I heard it, I felt like he was talking more specifically about if him and Biggie hadn't died, no. and they just went at it head to head. No. That was what would happen. Matter of fact, I'm gonna say it like this: If Pac and Big didn't die, T Pain wouldn't have a career. All right. None yeah. of that shit. None of that shit, y'all coming. And I, I'm not. I'm not hating on T Pain because I mean, some some. I had to grow into some of this new shit because I, I was like, man, what the fuck is this shit? It's corn. Like when I start growing up, and you know, what I'm saying like I'm, you know, young man now. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? This. This don't, you know, this shit ain't, you know, a lot of this shit just corny. Right. But I under, you know, it's a new climate. I understand at that at that time it was a new climate. This is, you know, this is what's going on. This is what's going on in the culture today. Okay, so I get it. But my thing of it is, yeah, shit, he wouldn't have a, a career if it wasn't for Pac. Yeah. If Pac, if Pac, if Pac didn't pass and Biggie didn't pass, you come on, man. You really think? Some of these people would be here. I mean, as shout out to according to hip hop, that's something that they were talking about. This man was twenty five years old with all the shit coming out, mm -hmm. um, all the stuff that he came out, and we're still talking about it today. Yep. This man was twenty five. They had to kill him. They had to because yep. if he would, if he would have stayed and got old, you know how crazy he would be. Exactly. Like as far as like the mindset. Exactly. Come on, man! You right about that. Come man. on, man. So I mean, it, it's like it's like this though. It's just and he even with big man, even with big like when Pac died, he was like, "Look, I gotta set this right. I gotta get West Coast and East Coast." Like that takes, and this man was twenty four, thinking like you don't even have people thinking thinking like that hardly. All right, and they motherfucking and they forties and stuff. Talking about beefing, and, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, come on, man, you pushing, you pushing up AAR and P age and shit. And you talking about we out here about to like, nah, Biggie was like, nah, man, we gotta get this right. We gotta make this right. 
At 24. At 24. At 24, dude. What the fuck, yeah. man? And it's just, it's just like the maturity. I think a lot of, I, I hate to say it, man. I, I, I kind of blame Jay Z for this shit. Okay. Because of the whole, you know, I'm a hide behind another man. Like, for instance, like when the Nas and the Mob Deep and all that shit was going on. He hid behind other people to be like, you didn't come at Jay direct. Like, Jay would be like on some, like, I'm the boss, but, you know, I'm going to come out here with a sub boss, and you got about this guy. You ain't going to come to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. that's how it was. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, and I think now, since that culture, since it, that's taken place, and it's kind of deemed acceptable. Now people are kind of like they kind of getting comfortable. They're comfortable with saying shit. Cause like I mean, it, I, look, it took me a long time to say I feel that Pac is overrated. At a certain time, at a certain time in my life, it took me a while. Cause you couldn't say that right after he died. Nah, niggas, are fu you think. You think when that one comedian said that shit about Kobe, remember that shit? Yeah. And where, where the fuck is he now? Right. <laughs> All right. right. Now imagine you saying some shit at Tupac right after he died saying, yeah, right. fuck that nigga. You would be seen. Not at all. You, in the social media area? In the social media area, er, I mean, era, excuse me, and if Pac, if Pac died today, if he, if he, if he would die today, and he came back, and you know, somebody came like, yeah, man, fuck Pop. Shh, that nigga been missing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know man, what I'm saying? People, people idolize that. Man, I'm telling you, man, it was that it was that crazy back then. Like, I mean, and this was this what I'm saying. This was pre-social media. Yeah, this was pre, you know, internet for most cats. So people wasn't really saying shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm going to go back and uh, listen to the T-Pain video because um, I might have misunderstood because I could have swore he was talking about more so like if him and Biggie went the distance lyrically, that's what would have happened. So I might have misunderstood. Um, so I have to go back and check that out. Well, I mean, I think a lot of it too is, you know, Pac had a different cadence. Yeah. he, I mean, he did have like a New York flow but he he didn't really he really you know he kind of he didn't sound like anybody else. Biggie, I mean he was kind of like a traditional. I mean he didn't sound like everybody else neither. But I mean the thing of it is like the style. I mean that was already done by like Big Daddy Kane and you know like the you know the B I G P O P P A like on that on that type of lyrical you know you know nutshellating word files and. Stretching and making sure this rhymes to that. I, you know, I understand why people would say, okay, yeah, he's a goat. Like the way he put these words together, you know, to string this to make this complicated, complex. You know what I'm saying? But like Pac, Pac had more of the, you know, he he pulled you in with like stories and and metaphors and 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 you know, trying to pull you in to see. And just like again, uh, my man from. The people from according to hip hop, I want to you know shout them out again, but they made a valid point. They were saying that the education level of this country is just dropped. Oh yes. Yeah. So like when it comes oh, to yeah. art, and especially when it comes to the arts, people don't understand. Pop was classically trained. He was a, you know he went to the art schools. Yeah. So like he understood how to like you know convey a message. Right. So people can understand and feel it. So, yeah, I mean, and another shout out uh, to the lyrical breakdown. If you check out, I, you know, did the song with Pop, got got my mind made up. Yep, He's yep. rap. He like right there. You can't tell me he ain't rapping. He rapping like the, you know, what you would hear from like a New York MC. And he, he rapping with, I mean, he ain't rapping with Slouse. He's got Daz Corrupt Meth and Red on the fucking track. Yep. If he, if he, you know what I'm saying? If he's a slouch, nah, man. Like he rapped with the best. Rapped against the best. He rapped against Nas, Jay Z, Big, Prodigy, Chino XL. And y'all saying like, oh, Pac ain't got no lyrics. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here, man. 
Man, Pac had, Pac had them niggas shook to the point. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Jay wasn't even saying shit to Pac. Soon he dead, you know, now he kind of, you know, he rose up. But as soon as him and, you know, Pac and Big died, he rose up and da 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 da. And then had the nerve say, oh, New York been sauce and Snoop kicked the bill. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Right. I'm going to shut up. But yeah. I'm gonna shut I up. mean, that was Jay. You know, Jay was good for the talk game. You know, he. he Jay just wasn't about that action because, you know, Prodigy said, you know, him and his goons surrounded Jay-Z and uh, Jay-Z was like, oh, I ain't want nothing. I was just, oh, I'm just rapping, dude. I'm just rapping. Nah. You know what I mean? You and, want uh, that Prodigy. That's the thing, man. You can't, some people don't take lightly when you, you embarrass them on a screen like that. You know what I mean? They be ready to take your blood. Prodigy said you know the Terry I mean? is too. Right. So, <laughs> you know. God damn it. Yeah, he... <laughs> So he, well, he, Jay's a Sagittarius too, but the Prodigy was like one of them, the classic mm-hmm. Sagittarius. Like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck you up when I right. see you. So Prodigy was like, okay, yeah. we're gonna take it to the streets. It sounds yeah. like you really want the beef, beef. Yeah, you know, and 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 you know, he said, uh, he said, uh, Prodigy and his people was waiting outside this place, this venue that Jay Z was at, and Jay Z finally came outside, and Jermaine Dupree was with him. <laughs> He said, uh, when Jermaine Dupree saw Prodigy and his goons, he took a sharp left and was like, uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. <laughs> he knew I'm not with you. That's on you, bro. You've been talking that shit on the record. I'm going to let you handle that. I'm going to go over here. Yo. He said, he said uh, Jermaine Dupree took a sharp little right. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go over this way. Uh, I'll that's see you later. Said, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, that, that's one thing I can credit to 50, man. That's one thing. Love him or hate him. One thing that 50 did, I can respect that Jay didn't. When 50 had beef, he addressed the beef. He didn't hide behind Yayo. He didn't hide behind Lloyd. He didn't hide behind Young Buck. Well, actually, he had beef with Young Buck. But he didn't hide behind his men. He He came and addressed the people he had beef with. He addressed Jay the Kid. He addressed the Fat Joe. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's one thing I give to 50. Yeah. Hate him, love him, or hate him. Yeah. He yeah. went, I mean, you know, at certain people, yeah, he went at. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Himself. Yeah. He didn't hide behind nobody. But, you know what I'm saying? But Jay, I, that's what I'm saying. He kind of missed that. It's like, that's why, why it is what it is now. It's like, you know, now people can just come out and say shit. But you now, you know, but you didn't have the fear of getting the shit beat out of you for saying it. You don't yeah. have that. You don't. I mean, it's still it's still there in pockets, but it's not as it's not as you know the street shit, man. Like in 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 the nineties, man. I mean, not that I was out there, but matter of fact, I didn't want to be out there. It was so real. <laughs> shit in the nineties. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you, some of y'all some of y'all favorite rappers out here that's rapping and. Talking about this, you know, I got cars, money, and shit. They, man, they was in the nineties. They, they wouldn't have made it. They wouldn't have made it. Would not have made it. Eighties or nineties, shit. Yeah, eighties. God uh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. Nah, you don't want to be out in that. Yeah, uh, but you know, it's it's what it is. What it is, man. I mean, you know, I don't I don't hate Jay Z or anything like that. No, no, it ain't no hate. I'm just saying his his methods are different. You know, yeah. Jay Z doesn't. I think he 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 does a lot of shit talking, but Jay Z his in the back of his mind, he's always concerned with being a wealthy person. So he's not trying to oh. Well, yeah, we were talking shit on that record, so now I got to back it up. Let me go get my gun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jay-Z is like, yeah, I'm going to talk my shit, but this is just records. You know what I mean? I'm trying to be the next Warren Buffett, and I'm trying to surpass people like Warren Buffett. So Jay-Z is more concerned with that. Yeah. You know, people like 50, he wants to be rich, but he's like, yeah, but uh, if I got beef, I got to handle it, son. You know what I mean? I got to handle it, son. I got beef, you involved. Right. You involved. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's my horrible impression. <laughs> yeah, man. Got beef, you involved. Man, I don't know this, man. You involved, nigga. Right. <laughs> you involved, nigga. <laughs> but, honestly, you know, 
but that kind of backfired on 52. That's why GU and they ain't nowhere to be. Oh, no, no, no. That's no, why they no, all no, disbanded. No, no. Yeah, but um, cause they have, after a while, they all get tired of that. They're like, look, nigga, I'm tired of beefing just because you beat me. <laughs> you, know I mean? you know, I got to be beefing every day. <laughs> oh, man, you got to load up, man. Right. <laughs> So, y'all let us know in the comments what y'all think about T-Pain's comments about Tupac. You know, I'm going to come back and uh, talk a little bit more about it next week after I've uh, had a chance to rewatch the video. But, uh, you know, if he's definitely talking more so about this day and age and the rappers that we are up against now, yeah. nah, they ain't got nothing for Tupac. Hey, man, they ain't got a prayer. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm saying. The whole, the whole sound Oh, Tupac uh, you know, they owe they style to Tupac. Mm -hmm. The whole style. I mean, now, with the exception of people like Scarface, CeeLo, Andre 3000, a couple, you know, Killer Mike, you know what I'm saying? I Those, those are probably going to be your exceptions, but probably like everybody else in the South, nah, your whole shit came from Pop. Pop yeah. birth, y'all niggas. Son, y'all niggas. <laughs> son, y'all niggas. Son, y'all niggas, <laughs> niggas, son. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, you got yeah, anything man. else you want to throw out there before we wrap nah, up? Nah, man, so, that's it. I'm, I appreciate, you know, y'all, you know, looking at us and, you know, just kind of been a little passionate. Right, you know what I'm saying. Right. I apologize for the past, <laughs> but it's just you know, man. Some some people, you know, when grown folk talk, man. Some people just need to shut the fuck up. Right. Shit. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, for the episode two fifteen and Triad Hip Hop Podcast, this is your man Kurt, and this is. I'll tell you, my name is Howard Wilson. <laughs> I want to let you know that you don't need that man. What you need to do. <laughs> Build up your more money and let you know that women ain't shit. I mean, oh god, that's how we man. There you go with that heteronormative yeah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> more <laughs> Oh man, but all right, y'all. Oh, we'll man. see y'all next time. Shit. Peace. Peace.